This is the Discovery Files podcast from the U.S. National Science Foundation. Since their development in the early 1900s, plastics have become ubiquitous. The United Nations estimate that more than 400 million tons are produced each year. Plastics have found their way into nearly every aspect of modern life, from cars and food cartons to the device you're hearing this on. A byproduct of this level of use is that plastic waste now contaminates the entire marine environment. Plastic debris comes in a large variety of shapes and sizes. When the scale drops below 5 millimeters, or roughly the size of a sesame seed, it is called microplastic. Supported in part by NSF, a research team at Louisiana State University are trying to better understand microplastics. Uvnesh Barty, associate professor in the Kane Department of Chemical Engineering, is leading this team. Professor Barty, how did you become interested in microplastics? And so the, it started around 2019, and I have a colleague here, uh, Professor K.T. Valsaraj. We started talking about this recent article which was published uh, on how microplastics actually were found on Pyrenees mountain range. Uh, it's a remote mountain range in Europe, very remote mountain range. That actually fascinated me that at that time, Professor Valsaraj from our department, myself, we started thinking about it, how we can use our skills to better understand microplastics. Then we approached National Science Foundation and Environmental Chemical Sciences Program. We actually supported the work, they liked the idea, and we started working on microplastics at that point. Where do microplastics come from? There are two major kinds of microplastics. One is primary microplastics, and these plastics are which directly enter into the environment into their microscopic form. So our clothes actually contain huge amount of polyester fibers. Those are all synthetic polymers. And when we wash them in washing machine and we drain the water out, these micron-sized fibers get added into the water bodies wherever we are discarding our wastewater. So those are primary microplastics. The second class of microplastics are generated from larger parent macroplastics. Let's say if we discard a water bottle into the environment over time, because of the environmental action, it's going to start breaking down into smaller pieces. So these are the two common ways how they actually get added into the environment. In a study looking at how these microplastics are affected by weathering, what impacts have you found there? What we found in our study was that if we have uh, small sized polyethylene particles and we release them in water, sun actually oxidizes the surface of those particles. And the product of that oxidation, photooxidation process is carboxylic acid group. And this carboxylic acid groups induces a negative charge onto the surface of these microplastics and increases the hydrophilicity of it. So the original pristine plastics that we find, they are very hydrophobic. They don't like water at all. But over time, while they don't really dissolve in water, they actually start liking water because of this photooxidation process. What we call the water wettability of these plastics change because of the photooxidation process. In our research, what we found is because of this specific photooxidation process, we actually introduce negative surface charge onto microplastics. And it is because of this negative charge, we demonstrated that positively charged pollutants such as lead ions, they can actually get absorbed onto these microplastic surface. It's all the result of the sunlight induced photooxidation and weathering. What are the next steps in that study? We have this core understanding of how microplastics behave. Based on that understanding, we want to pursue three directions. One, now we know that pollutants can absorb onto the microplastic because in changing the uh, surface chemistry of microplastic. But the question is, under what conditions are those pollutants released from the surface? 
right? So for example, the environment in our stomach is very different from, from the environment in our uh, gut. So what are the conditions under which these can get released? The second area we are interested in is these microplastics are found in ocean in water bodies. But in water bodies, we have so much bacteria present. How does the bacteria interact with the microplastic and lead to something called the biofilm formation onto microplastics? And how does it impact the fate of microplastics in real, real environment? And third topic that we are interested in, how can we remove these microplastics from the environment? And what type of filters, for example, we can use? Can we use some kind of electric field driven separation? How can we purify water? So that's the third area we are interested in. How could you clean these up? Would it need to be a microfilter or could you use some sort of plastic dissolving enzyme? So there are different ways how one could actually mitigate such environmental problem. One can use filters, as you say, one can also think about using enzymes that would selectively absorb and bind to plastic and consume. Uh, they are, they are, there's a bacteria like uh, hydrocarbon consuming bacteria, such as you know, Alkina orax, that would eat up uh, microplastics. But the challenge still remains, the core challenge is how one would separate not microplastics, but when they actually become nanoplastics. It becomes extremely hard to filter them out and we need to look into some kind of alternate strategies to mitigate. Huge teams of scientists are working on to answer this specific question, how would we actually clean up? Is there anything the average person can do to help limit the amount of microplastics getting into the environment? The best way at least we can minimize is recycling the plastics and not discarding it into the environment where the weathering processes would eventually lead to the generation of microplastics and again it's gonna get involved get into these aquatic food web and when we eat those fish we actually get those mi microplastics back in our body which we generate so that's probably what a common person could do but also federal government and local governments what they can also help uh, how they can help is they can try to assist with the development of water purification of water treatment sites where we would specifically separate microplastics from the common waste we, we generate so how uh, how we could do that so uh, both you know there's a role of local government federal government and individual it's the role it's the collective effort that that could potentially impact and minimize uh, this environmental pollutant Special thanks to Boob Nash Barty, Adam Eggers, and Dina Headley. For the Discovery Files, I'm Nate Podker. Please subscribe wherever you get podcasts. And if you like our program, share with a friend and consider leaving a review. Discover how the U.S. National Science Foundation is advancing research at nsf.gov.